STV, where you give you lots of information. And today we are going to be dwelling on the spiritual beat of the family. I have guests who are chaplains in this country and abroad, and they're going to be talking to us about chaplaincy and church leadership. I will give them a chance to introduce themselves and then we take off this discussion. Welcome. Hello, viewers. I'm Cole Sylvester Omolo Okello. I'm born again. I'm a pastor. And with Connect Chaplaincy, I'm a sergeant uh, at Connect Chaplains for Kenya. I'm also the programs coordinator. I also, I'm also a chaplain with the Kenya prisons. Mm -hmm. I've been doing for the last four years. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Welcome. You do with prisons. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, my next guest. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Kennedy Waningu. Um, I serve with uh, Connect Chaplains. I command as a captain, serving humanity. I also, I'm also in the management leadership of the International College of Peace Studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to have you, gentlemen. Thank you. Good to have you too. I'm looking forward to hearing lots of things sure. from you. Yeah. Especially when it comes to leadership and mm -hmm. chaplaincy. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling us what? a chaplain does or who a chaplain is? Basically, a chaplain is somebody who gives service to humanity. Okay. Yeah. Whatever kind of service. Whatever kind of service. Uh -huh. And uh, as Jesus said, uh -huh. I was sick, you never visited me. I was uh, naked, you never gave me clothes. I was angry, you never gave me food. Mm -hmm. So those are part of uh, things a chaplain should do. Okay. And, and They don't uh, have to be Christians, do they? We have chaplains, by the way, we have chaplains who are, who are of many religions. Oh, really? Yeah, we don't just have uh, uh, Christian chaplains, you know. Okay. We have uh, uh, chaplains in diversive uh, religions. Mm -hmm. But we are Christian chaplains. So you are, chaplains. you are the captain sure. in Kenya mm -hmm. of all the chaplains in the country. Yeah. Okay. Um, of... Um, Connect chaplains. Connect means chaplains. yeah, mm -hmm. cooperation of national Christian evangelicals. Okay. And um, this is uh, a diplomatic chaplain. A diplomatic chaplain. Yes. That means you are international. Yeah. Connect chaplains is uh, is founded in South America mm -hmm. uh, by uh, General. Carlos Aroba mm -hmm. is based in South uh, uh, America mm -hmm. in, uh, in Guayaquil. Uh, we have just finished uh, training last week. Okay. Where we graduated of, uh, of uh, 60 sergeants. Wow. Mm. Congratulations. You are doing a great job. Thank you. I actually must admit that uh, we have many workers for Jesus and many workers Amen. for the gospel. Amen. I would like to know what, how different that is from a pastor, a chaplain and a pastor. Is there any difference? Do they do the same job? Um, it's almost the same job, but mm -hmm. there is a little bit of a distinction. Mm -hmm. A chaplain is a servant of many different institutions. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. as you are a pastor, you belong only to a particular congregation that you're supposed to serve or a particular denomination. Mm -hmm. Though, however, mm -hmm. a chaplain can also be a military chaplain. Mm -hmm. A chaplain can also be a hospital chaplain. Mm -hmm. Chaplains serve according to the specific area of their callings. The true distinction is a chaplain is, uh, for example, like Connect chaplains. Mm -hmm. Connect chaplains, they are diplomatic chaplains registered with United Nations and European Union. Um. Yes recognized by the governments of the world. Inter it actually, Connect Chaplains is an intergovernmental organization. Okay. Evangelical. It's intergovernmental. Yes. So it's recognized by all governments. Yes. And also recognized by the UN. Yes. And the UNESCO. Sure. Okay. Where there is a, um, a country member of United Nations, mm -hmm. Connect Chaplains serves there. Wow. Yeah, in Silvester, all... what makes you different? You said you're a pastor. You also double in as a chaplain as well. Mm -hmm. How does that make your role different? I think I know the roles of a pastor. Of a pastor. Yes. Well, most pastors normally serve in one localized place, mm -hmm. and many are not interested to go out 
from the normal church environment. Mm -hmm. But for me, besides being a chaplain, I started as a missionary. Okay. Where I could go out to the normal church environment and minister the word of God to people mm -hmm. in in Congo, mm -hmm. in Burundi, mm -hmm. in Rwanda, mm -hmm. in India, mm -hmm. in UAE. Mm -hmm. So it requires some level of sacrifice. Okay. Most pastors are not ready to leave the normal church environment mm -hmm. to go and minister. Mm -hmm. So I started as a missionary, and then now I joined chaplaincy. Okay. I started also with the prison ministry, where when you go there, you're the one that provides almost everything, okay. from transport mm -hmm. and all other giftings. Mm -hmm. So. Most pastors would like to just receive, but it's, not, it's very hard for them just to give. Mm -hmm. So it requires more, more, more of sacrifice on your side. You really have to sacrifice mm -hmm. your resources, your time, and everything. When you talk about sacrifice, it's true when you sacrifice that you get out of yourself and your time and your comfort. You know? How do you manage to leave your families, to go out and minister to other people's families, to stay out from your family and away for about a week or days, ministering to other people at this time, how possible is that? Uh, it requires, so number one, it requires planning. And uh, you have got to build many leaders around you. Okay. And uh, in, most time, in most occasions, you have mm -hmm. to delegate mm -hmm. to leaders that you've trained. Okay. Many times, if you do everything alone, many things will go bad. Mm -hmm. But we have really to train leaders whom you can delegate many activities to. Mm -hmm. And you then pl just balance your time. You balance your time. Yeah. I want to know how this time is balanced, because Dr. Kennedy, when I listened to you in your introduction, you said you are the captain of the entire country. That means you oversee all the other chaplains and what they do. If this uh, chaplain with us today is just a single one, and he has to do all these travels to many different countries and to prison and to his church. How then do you have to plan your time, even as a leader? Our, um, thank you for that question. Our diplomatic chaplain, for example, mm -hmm. in Africa, or in East Africa, um, it is structured. Okay. And uh, we work under what you call uh, command or orders. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the highest order, and then it flows to the chain of a sergeant. Sergeant mm -hmm. is the is the one of the lowest, um, you know, level. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we have a structure of working. So one instruction mm -hmm. goes to the entire country. Let me give for example. Mm -hmm. We have uh, as a national captain or as a national commander, we have mm -hmm. a structure of our regional commanders mm -hmm. or county commanders mm -hmm. who have our leaders that they are working together with. Mm -hmm. So we make sure everybody has a program and they get an opportunity. For example, you can have one or two days away working with the people in the community, with the people in the most area of needs mm -hmm. and working with the entire team down to the ground. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, saving time, uh, delegation of uh, responsibility, that requires saving time and um, it gives one a humble time to go out and serve as a chaplain it because is. of delegation of uh, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, it just works like a flow of chain and command that uh, in the end of the day, or in the end of the week, reports are submitted in. Mm -hmm. It's all very easy. It's more or less like an organization. Yes, it is an organization uh -huh. with an organized structure. What has to be done at what time mm -hmm. and who is responsible. Mm -hmm. We have, for example, supervisors. We have instructors. We have uh, different leadership. Mm -hmm. And this way also a course of leadership uh, is very important. Yes, because I imagine that if you are not a leader, mm -hmm. you know, or if you are just any kind of leader, yes. it's possible to give instructions that people defy, they don't yeah, follow. Sure. It's also not easy to receive instructions mm -hmm. as an elderly person, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. instructions that don't agree with what you want. Yeah. And then you have to follow and pass the other. Sure. I don't know if you ever have certain times instructions have come from above yes and you are unwilling to follow them how do you even pass them to the lower people sure we work and uh you see as connect chaplains we have um, guidelines mm -hmm. rules and regulation we have constitution from our global command we have uh Kones chaplains uh for example is international we have uh, orders from the global leader mm -hmm. 
to the African leadership, to the regional leadership. For example, we have leaders in West Africa, leaders in East Africa, leaders in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, when a command is given, all leaders must follow. For example, mm -hmm. there is a, a conference or there is a need that has reason. You just give order. Everybody signed and agreed that I'll be obedient. In fact, before you receive the badge, mm -hmm. Wow. Before you receive the badge, mm -hmm. there is uh, an action of commitment mm -hmm. whereby you profess, you are asked, will you be faithful before the authority and before Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and your lords to fulfill the engagement and the assignment be called? Mm -hmm. Then you have to respond and say, yes, sir. If you are unwilling to take such a uh, responsibility or such instruction, just then you, yeah, you are defying mm -hmm. the leadership is taken away from you. Okay. Uh, every, for example, every sergeant mm -hmm. has uh, a, a number. For example, let me use his. Mm -hmm. Let me use his. You don't have Please. to remove it. It's okay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Let me use his. You mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. when you open this, mm -hmm. it has uh, his photo, yes. then his number, mm -hmm. his position is blood group. Yes. For example. Wow, it's that serious. It, that is how serious <laughs> it is. I, I, I'd it. like to know, even before you go too far, this thing looks so simple, yet so complex. Mm -hmm. What is your major objective, you know, that you really want to achieve in doing this? Because if he is a pastor, you could also be a pastor in your local church and mm -hmm. raise members and train them mm -hmm. to lead others. Mm -hmm. Why must you become a chaplain and join into this Connect chaplaincy? Yeah, it is just about uh, social responsibility, mm -hmm. serving where there is a need most. Okay. Yeah, because that's your, that's your major objective. Oh, yeah. Our major objective is uh, serving humanity mm -hmm. where the need is most. Where the need is most. Is most. What do you think ties you, Sylvester, to this group? What do you feel draws you to this group that you must belong, other than you just being a pastor in your local church and you still serving the needs of humanity? Yeah, in the first place, mm -hmm. we have got the words of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in the book of Matthew 28, verse from verse 18 downwards. Yes. After he rose from the dead, mm -hmm. one of the last commands that, that left behind mm -hmm. is go ye into, the, into all nations and preach the gospel to all creation. Mm -hmm. So for me, it gives me an opportunity when we have people who are like-minded, who have the uh, same passion and vision mm -hmm. to accomplish this mission. Mm -hmm. Because what we have nowadays is that uh, the missionary aspect of, of the church mm -hmm. has died off. Yes. So many people are now just building mega churches mm -hmm. and just rotating along, along one place. Mm -hmm. but and see, doing just what they want. It's what they want and but just, so now they the Connect Chaplaincy it offers makes you accountable yeah. and offers you the An opportunity and also a door to also minister to many people across, okay. across the borders of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some of the things that you share in this? Other than, you know, you must give reports of, you know, what are you doing? How many people have you reached out to? What else is your target as you do this? Because I think there's so many ministries, there's so many ministries that are all focusing all their energies into preaching the gospel and preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ and meeting the needs of humanity. What is it that is so special about the Connest Chaplaincy? Um, I think one of the areas is, uh, one of our focus area is giving back to the community, mm -hmm. just like everybody's doing, mm -hmm. but we look forward to doing it with excellence, expecting no returns. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, excellence, expecting yeah, no, no returns. No returns. Okay. Uh, the Bible says, uh, whatever you're doing, do it as if you're doing unto Christ. Mm -hmm. When I'm lifting my hands and worshiping and thanking God, eh, mm -hmm. I don't expect, uh, I don't say, okay, I lift hands and then the Lord will bless me. Mm -hmm. When I walk on my the Lord, will, I'm just doing it unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as, okay, when you look at church, uh, church leadership, mm -hmm. others are called to be evangelists, teachers, mm -hmm. apostles. And then we have administrators who are like working in the church ushering, mm -hmm. church elders, all those kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. eh? In the Connect Chaplains, you have to be very specific. What has the Lord called you to do? 
Or do you, do you think he has called you for the prison ministry? Mm -hmm. Do you think he has called you in the, for example, his first aid mm -hmm. activities? Mm -hmm. Do you think the Lord has called you into, into for example, like a counseling ministry mm -hmm. or a hospital ministry mm -hmm. or a rescue ministry? Uh, there is also justice part of it. So who identifies that? Or rather, even before you get to that, how does one become Wonderful. a Kones chaplain? Yes. Mm -hmm. There is... Um, 40 hours of theoretical training. Okay. 40 say, hours. 40 hours. Uh -huh. In a span of? Yes, in a span of... Uh, one week, one there is, year. There is uh, our categories of training. Okay. According to a specification. Mm -hmm. But the general training takes two weeks, mm -hmm. like 10 days. Mm -hmm. The general training. Uh, but we can have an introductory training of around uh, three days. Mm -hmm. Then you, you begin discovering what is your area of, cha of calling into the ministry to be a chaplain as mm -hmm. a church leader. Mm -hmm. That's why you see he's serving as a pastor, mm -hmm. but he has a ministry for the prison. Yeah. He has a ministry for the hospital. Mm -hmm. So, that so is once you go through mm -hmm. the training, you, yes. you automatically become yeah, yeah. a chaplain. The leadership. Mm -hmm. The leadership would identify the area of your calling. Okay. In fact, there's grading. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of activities, mm -hmm. so there is grading. Mm -hmm. And we also do parades for functions. Parades for functions. Mm -hmm. For example, there is a celebration. For example, there is Kenyatta Day mm -hmm. and uh, Mashuja Day mm -hmm. or public functions. We participate. There is even concerts that you are do. done. Yes, yes. Ah, yeah, and then in our good. uniform. Mm -hmm. you oh, know? you have a uniform. Yes, yeah. yes. So many things make you unique. Yes. You even wear uniform. Yeah, you even wear your uniform. And even we have ranks. Mm -hmm. Today I didn't carry my rank. I could have shown you. Okay. Yeah. But the must, identity Must cast. all the chaplains come from one particular denomination? Not really. Mm -hmm. For example, we have done the training from Pentecost Assemblies of God. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kenya Assemblies of God. We have done training from many, many, many denominations. Mm -hmm. Pefa Church. Yeah, we have so many denominations, be it Protestants mm -hmm. or Evangelical, all of them. So you said this CONES uh, is mm -hmm. an international thing. Sure. When did it start, Sylvester? Kones. How long has it been here? Yes. In Kenya. Yes. Yeah. Not even in Kenya. In Kenya oh, globally. globally. Yes, yes. It started in 1977. 1977. Yes. It's been there for a while. For a long time. Yeah. And in Kenya, Sylvester, do you have any idea when you started in Kenya? Kenya, you are the first team. Kenya, You're the, the first, first team. One, yeah. mm. And that has been how long? One year now. One year. Mm -hmm. How many are you already? We Right now, we have... Um, we have over 60 chaplains. Wow. Yes. Six, uh, but spread across the counties. Mm -hmm. It is interesting how the senior clergy is, uh, I mean, uh, like 70% uh, have taken this position mm -hmm. from, from, uh, from Central, mm -hmm. like Nyeri, from Kisumu, mm -hmm. that is, uh, I mean, Western, Nakuru. And so what's your, what's your plan of work? What's your plan of work? Do you just go visiting churches, hospitals, and schools, and preaching the word, and that is it? No, we have a program, mm -hmm. let's say monthly program, Yes. then weekly programs. Okay. Yeah. And so everyone is accountable to their leader. Wonderful. Yes, everybody is accountable to give their monthly report, mm -hmm. and then their annual reports. Okay. Of course, when you look at our identity card, it also expires annually. Oh, really? Then you have to renew. <laughs> <laughs> you have to renew. You have to renew. So by in the submitting. event that I fail to submit my report or do my duty, mm -hmm. what happens? You are a lazy, uh, you should be a lazy chaplain. Uh -huh. And then uh, you can Am be... I evicted from office? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. To no longer be a chaplain. Yes, to no longer be a chaplain of such chaplains we are doing. Uh -huh. Because this diplomatic chaplain. Yes. When you look at his identity card, uh -huh. or my identity card, mm -hmm. is a uh, let pass. His diplomatic identity card, let pass. Yes. So, uh, for example, as a national leader, mm -hmm. I give my report to the global command from every chaplain. Mm -hmm. And they give their report to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. To just see and follow up what is it that he's yes. doing. Yes, yes. So have you been able to bear any fruits? What good reports have you had 
What kinds of changes have you made that the people who have been there before you have not yet made? Sylvester, is there any you can list or not? Uh, we have, uh, of course, transformed lives. Mm -hmm. Because when you go out there, even to preach to people that have been separated from other people, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe in the, let's say the hospital or uh, in prisons, mm -hmm. we give a message of hope, mm -hmm. that there's still hope. That even if you're, if you're, even if you're bound mm -hmm. within the confines of the prison, mm -hmm. you're only bound physically, but not spiritually. Mm -hmm. And we've had people that have uh, left prison and uh, we've met outside there, they're rejoicing. Mm -hmm. So we also, they also give their reports, mm -hmm. even the chaplains in different prisons, they also give their reports to the headquarters of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And they've been giving very positive, very, very positive reports. Yeah. And that's why we're still there. Mm -hmm. So mostly it's a transformed life. It's a transformed life. You preach life. to them all the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that the God loves them in spite of what they've done. Mm -hmm. Many times when you go out there, because you, you may meet condemned people, the best message you can give them is a message of hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has transformed many lives. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a lot of transformation. Wow. Yeah. One thing, but just adding on what he said, yes, was uh, Christmas. Mm -hmm. During Christmas. Yes. There's this group of uh, drug addicts mm -hmm. in Ngumba, mm -hmm. former drug addicts. Mm -hmm. I met with these people, and by the way, I have photos for that. I mm -hmm. met with these young people mm -hmm. sharing Christmas with them. Mm -hmm. These people would hear these young people saying, can we come and live with you or be where you are? Because after sharing with them, there is a, a lot of touch and transformation mm -hmm. of their mindset, how the world and the people looks at them. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, there are so much yearning to know more. When you speak to them, their heart is moved. And uh, another incident is at Mother Teresa's center. Mm -hmm. we, we visited and you see uh, the, the children with the autism, yeah. they feel joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're able to reach out to oh them and something. Yes, they you feel their love and hope. Yeah, they feel valued. That there are people who are yeah. outside there who still care and yes. think about them. Yes, because you see, uh, maybe parents would leave them there. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody with a physical deformation. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people would think, wow, this is a shame to the family. Yeah. Then they are put there. Mm -hmm. so, I know it can really feel mm -hmm. hurting. Yeah. Let's talk about leadership in the church. Mm -hmm. You said you all emanate from different denominations. Mm -hmm. How are you able to synchronize and come together without, without uh, having to exalt your different beliefs from the different denominations? Because do you also mix with pro both Protestants and the Catholics and, you know, how are you able to synchronize and, and agree? Yeah, great. Uh, one thing is, uh, uh, the Bible says, the calling and the gifting of God has no repentance. Mm -hmm. You just find that uh, when a word comes out, that, okay, this, this chaplain, mm -hmm. and this is what you're doing, mm -hmm. you see people begin responding. Mm -hmm. Before you know, they are from which denomination, <laughs> on their forms, they are already in the chaplain. Mm -hmm. And you cannot just make tell them, you know, we yeah. don't take such kind of people. Yes, yes. So who doesn't qualify? Uh, anybody who doesn't qualify is somebody who doesn't have a calling for chaplain, he doesn't qualify. Because how do I know I don't have a calling? My interest will just be, I love the Lord, I want to serve in this ministry, I want to go back to the prison mm -hmm. and encourage the people who have been there. I want to go to the hospital, I saw people suffer and die without Christ, I want to go. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't qualify? Who should not even attempt to apply for this chaplaincy? We have, um, we have a form that uh, people fill mm -hmm. and a recruitment uh, process mm -hmm. that goes on. Okay. This recruitment process goes on for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. It helps us to select the qualified chaplaincy mm. and know who qualifies, who doesn't qualify. So the qualify. questionnaire just yes. disqualifies you? Yeah, the questionnaire just disqualifies you. Okay. Mm. I get it. Uh, my major interest at this point is the leadership in the mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. There are so many wrangles that we hear and see in the churches today mm -hmm. when it comes to leadership. Mm -hmm. Because mostly people do leadership by election. Mm -hmm. No one is concentrating and saying, this is the one that is appointed or called by God. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be the one up there, the one who is giving commands and giving instructions. And nobody wants to receive 
by virtue that they have also been called and they also have the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because of this, there's a lot of fights in the church. Do you experience such things as well? Yes. Uh, I run a public education center, mm -hmm. also the International College of Peace Studies. Mm -hmm. And um, when we go, uh, you know, bishops, pastors, they are our students. Yes. Oh, but, they're your students, yes. the bishops and pastors. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, and uh, now that is where we get to talk about church leadership administration mm -hmm. or church leadership. When the ministry is still at the initial stages mm -hmm. or the church is still, uh, you know, let me use the word struggling, mm -hmm. there are few people who realize the calling. Say the man of God is called by God. Mm -hmm. But when it begins, to grow and spring for 300 members, mm -hmm. for example, 2,000, mm -hmm. the issue of management comes in. Mm -hmm. This is where people would say, okay, we'll be in charge of small congregation of 50, 50, or 100, mm -hmm. and it's even in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It comes to a place because of a professional regulation, even of the government, and to avoid the uh, to avoid the uh, fightings and quarrels and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. As Moses said, um, as the Lord spoke to Moses, two leaders, and then Joshua, yeah. who to be in charge of 50s, to be in charge of hundreds. Mm -hmm. You know, now that is where the wrangles come. Yeah. People would like, and the Lord told Moses, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, um, the people demanded, the Israelites demanded, a leader. We, a leader. Yeah. The Lord told me the leader will oppress your children. Mm -hmm. There will be challenges in leadership. But the, the, the Lord told the servant of God, Samuel, eh? give them their, their desire. And mm -hmm. the desire was granted. Wrangles can be there because from a secular point of view, people would seek position of influence. Mm -hmm. But not from the biblical point of view, however. Because there's a prophet who speaks from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there is a teacher, there's an evangelist, and then there is an apostle. Mm -hmm. When it comes to rank or leadership in the church, people would seek to, to be recognized sometimes in mm -hmm. some churches, mm -hmm. and others would seek to be followed by a crowd, mm -hmm. or others would seek to be known. Those are the many reasons why yes. wrangles yeah. come. Come know? in the church. Sylvester, you are a pastor. I do not know how big your congregation is, but I think I agree with Dr. Kennedy when he says that initially when you're just starting and the church is struggling, people acknowledge you as the man of God. But later as they grow up to 2,000, even the offering is now not the same. You know, Even if 2,000 people gave one shilling each, your offering would be 2,000. And if 300 people you know, gave... If 300 people also gave one shilling each, mm -hmm. that will again still be 300 shillings. So there's a lot of difference. The many people have come. You're not able to visit each and every one of them. You're not able to meet each and every one of them. You know, there's a lot that you have to do. How do you manage? Have you ever been in that stage in life as a pastor where leadership is an issue? Uh quote the exhortations that uh, Paul mm -hmm. gave to this young pastor Timothy mm -hmm. the book of first Timothy chapter 3 the yes. qualifications mm -hmm. for choosing a leader yes there's a place that he mentioned that you should not choose a recent convert mm -hmm. and every leader must first be tested mm -hmm. so in most cases the the first primary cause of all this is the motive okay of uh, many leaders mm -hmm. many we have got you have already the first calling, God must call you. Mm -hmm. So if you're not called, mm -hmm. uh, and now when you go through the fire of mm -hmm. testing, mm -hmm. if God has not anointed you to be in that office, mm -hmm. many people normally start looking at other things, mm -hmm. what you can eat, get, mm -hmm. and leave. So we, ha we have a period of testing for every leader. Mm -hmm. that is a called. period of testing for every leader. A I wish to know categorically how you confirm that this person who has come to me seeking for an appointment has been called and how do they pass the tests? And what is the test? You know, one of the what the test is and how do you confirm they have been called? One of the things that we have got to look at, number one, mm -hmm. is also on, on area of submission. Okay. Can this person really submit? Mm -hmm. 
and you can also test him with all the duties to see whether he can be humble because another area is the area of pride mm -hmm. someone will feel that i know what you know mm -hmm. yet god is a god of order yes when he calls persons into leadership even if you are 20 there has to be an order so many times when the, the spirit of pride crops in mm -hmm. someone will say that i know what you know mm -hmm. i'm even better than you not knowing mm -hmm. that uh, it is god that anoints and places someone there it is god that anoints does god only anoint the powerful the qualified the good the ones who can submit the ones who are humble or he also appoints and calls the weak god anoints as he chooses is divine mm -hmm. He chooses as he wills. Yes. And uh, of course, someone must, you must also identify your calling. For instance, mm -hmm. if God has called you to be a pastor and you go to the area of evangelism, you'll not make it there. Mm -hmm. You're operating on a wrong office. Mm -hmm. So another area that causes wrangles is when people that, people that are operating wrong offices. Mm -hmm. You are a called evangelist, mm -hmm. and then you come to fit in the office of a pastor. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the office of a pastor has got its own unique anointing mm -hmm. and grace mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. That is quite different from the one that operates in the evangelical calling. For instance, mm -hmm. pastor will be given a, a, very deep, a, a very big heart. A pastor can persevere with people. Mm -hmm. A pastor can be abused. A pastor can be called all, all sorts of names, but mm -hmm. tomorrow mm -hmm. we'll still embrace you. Mm -hmm. A pastor can sit for five hours or 10 hours listening to someone's problem. Mm -hmm. But an evangelist, when he sits with, stays with you for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. is already beginning to, to get irrational. Yes. So if you operate in a wrong office, mm -hmm. it will also cause a lot of problem. <laughs> So, and of course, it is <laughs> the motive. Mm -hmm. God, God, God must have called you. If God, God calls you, called you, he will sustain you in the fire. He will sustain you. And eventually, mm -hmm. he will confirm your office. It's, it's the one who, who confirms people's offices. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to confirm as a human being because someone yes. might come packaged as an angel. Mm -hmm. But after some time, you'll, be, you'll just be shocked that it was not that angel that you thought he was. So at the end of the day, <laughs> it's God who confirms. <laughs> Commander, are you able to confirm being the national commander when Sylvester proposes to you, I know this brother, I have worked with him as a pastor, his life is like this, like this. Are you able to confirm and say, Tick, I qualify him to be a chaplain or a leader. This one is called to be a church leader. Wonderful. Um, the qualification of a leader is in the book of Acts. Number one, the fear of God, mm -hmm. full of wisdom, mm -hmm. and all those kinds that the Bible is mentioning. Mm -hmm. What we normally do, we look at uh, your CV, and then we also get normally a recommendation letter. Mm -hmm. A recommendation letter and your CV, what have you done, where have you done, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. And uh, because we even take, uh, get your biography. Mm -hmm and a letter of recommendation that we scrutinize through that and uh, it 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 helps to show whether you qualify or you don't qualify mm -hmm. yes so you basically just use the yeah. political bit yes. to qualify uh, how do you know this person is able to stand the fire and the time of test we look at uh, their experience we mm -hmm. look at their experience, what they have done before, mm -hmm. and uh, with who are they doing what they are doing currently. Mm -hmm. That is how one can be verified whether they qualify mm -hmm. for the service or not. Uh, church is supposed to be the place where people find a lot of joy and mm -hmm. peace and mm -hmm. fun. Unfortunately, it has become the battlefield for not the goers or the followers, but the leadership. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear more of this. We are taking a short break. Just now, we are on SMS line 21144. We are also on Facebook and YouTube at GBS TV. Coming back shortly, stay with us. Thank you. I, I hate church battles.
This is Art Club, which comes to you every Wednesday and Thursday as from 8.30 to 9.00 p.m. Never miss. Never. Oh, no. Elijah. I'm a young caller. Everywhere. GBS. Welcome back, viewer. I am here with the men of God, chaplains and pastors. I also have the Kenya commander in the Connect Chaplaincy. We are talking about uh, church leadership and chaplaincy, especially in this country. Dr. Kennedy, when I think about how our seniors in leadership in the church fight over staff, sometimes they worry whether they are able to even lead and guide the government and the country as a whole. Because when our government is shaken, when our schools and institutions are shaken, where we need to run to fastest for solutions is the church. But when you find the leadership in the church compromised, fighting, not in agreement, where is supposed to be our next stop for solutions? Hey, that's a very good question. Um, the church is the salt of the earth mm -hmm. and the light of the world. Mm -hmm. When you read about the early apostles in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, John, the whole of New Testament, they never compromised. They spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. And there is a reward of speaking the truth without compromise. Mm -hmm. And then the truth must not be changed and uh, be uh, look like it is uh, criticism. Mm -hmm. You can be a church leader who wants uh, popularity and you use that position to look like uh, you are speaking the truth but in the other words there is a thin line whereby you want to be heard mm -hmm. and you want to be popular or you want to be recognized. Mm -hmm. I think it is a sin and it is unbiblical mm -hmm. for a church leader to compromise. Paul never compromised. Jesus. But you see, compromise comes with a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Because if you compromise, then you will still be known. If you don't compromise, everybody steps on you. If you don't compromise, you know, who gets to know you? No one. Mm -hmm. So you, became, you become irrelevant in your leadership. Mm -hmm. Because who knows you? Who do you command? Who do you listen to? So sometimes, then you have to compromise. And that's, what I, that's a lot of what I see. I would like to give an example of that yes. word compromise. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a, a clergy. Yeah. You, have a church, uh, you have a church in a hall. You don't have a church plot. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the area... A politician mm -hmm. says we can donate a church plot. And then you realize that wow, if I have a church plot, the church number one is connected to a political leader. <laughs> number two mm -hmm. will have a church plot. Mm -hmm. There are two advantage. I'm yes. connected to yes. an influ another influential person yes. in the government of the world. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, I'll have some donation to buy a plot, which mm -hmm. means I'll be stable. Yes. I will settle from paying monthly rent. Yes. Then the same person who's giving me the plot mm -hmm. uh, is going even to help build and invite friends. Mm -hmm. So I'll have peer friends. You'll be the, famous also. Yeah, I'll be famous. Mm -hmm. That is what I call a compromise. Yes. If uh, anybody is coming to contribute to build the church, that is good. But they should not be, as he said, Ali, uh, I should not compromise by saying, oh, now, tukona mweshimua flani leo, ako hapa. You stop preaching the Bible every time you preach, you mention them, mm -hmm. or welcome in the, them in the podium, and mm -hmm. they have not even given their life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. They spill politics from the altar that the Lord gave you. Mm -hmm. You defile yourself. You defy the Lord's calling, mm -hmm. and you defy the congregation. And that's how spirituality dies. What about if you just stand firm and say, 
Thank you for the contribution. God bless you. We're waiting for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Is that good enough? Because they also want recognition. They also want fame. Mm -hmm. They also want a channel, you know, to prove to the world that this is where they have been taking their money. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, it is They're looking for their next term in office mm -hmm. through this. And you know what? The Bible says, mm -hmm. let not your right hand know what your left hand is. You are the one who knows the Bible. Yes. They do not know it. Mm -hmm. They don't read it. Mm -hmm. So speaking that to them is just noise to them. I don't think it doesn't just... make any, any sense to them. I, For I them, the agenda is to make it known. Uh -huh. yes. I don't think if it is bad to say, Thank you very much for mm -hmm. what you have done. Mm -hmm. That is a very good thing. Everybody... It, takes, it takes such a strong leader yes. to do that. Yes. Not caring what they lose. Yes, yes, yes. You know? But as you said, we all want to keep the ties. Mm -hmm. We all want to keep the ties. Mm -hmm. I mean, next time I have gotten someone to lean on, someone mm -hmm. to call. Yeah. You know, the next time I have a fundraising. It's going to be so easy. One mm -hmm. person is going to give me one million. Mm -hmm. So I only look for 100,000 from 250 people, mm -hmm. which is so easy, mm -hmm. you know. So our leadership is a bit questionable. I don't know whether you agree or not. I agree. Mm -hmm. If uh, you agree, what do you think we should do? Because honestly, this is not the way to lead, especially in the church. We should be, uh, be the, we should be the ones who are guiding the steps of the government. We should be the ones giving solutions to the many problems you have in a society and in our nation. But from where we sit today, it looks to me like the church leadership has failed to guard themselves and to govern the people under them. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. From the both New and Old Testament, the kings mm -hmm. looked for a solution from men of God. Exactly. Men of God should give direction. Mm -hmm. I want to give a very pretty simple, simple example. Mm -hmm. Right now we have locusts <laughs> moving from county to county. To county. Mm -hmm. The men of God need to ask the Lord. What is this? And what shall we do? And what? Very good. And what give shall... us. Yes. The people down here the yes. solution. Yes. yes. I remember there are days mm -hmm. where by um, the former president Moy, mm -hmm. the late, yes, would call for a national prayer mm -hmm. because the church leaders were like, we need to seek God, mm -hmm. we need to cry to God, and you can see. Uh, but one makes people, everybody like, wow, okay, mm -hmm. there is godliness. Such a leadership, yeah. could, uh, the, which means the leadership of a nation, uh, be it a president or a server, mm -hmm. will realize that, wow, okay, men of God are calling us to cry to God. Mm -hmm. All of us, we are powerless. Mm -hmm. What about if we seek God for a way forward? Yeah. Or else locusts are really and, and uh, evading. evading and things are happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there are those who are doing such a like, but all of us, our interests should not be, as you said, should not be questionable mm -hmm. by just um, looking for the political mileage mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a pastor. Yes. I look for a, a, a mileage from the world. As a reverend mm -hmm. or an apostle or a teacher, I want to get some grading mm -hmm. from a political leader. I want to you know, to build a relationship with the people of the world is good so mm -hmm. that we can minister to them, mm -hmm. but doesn't have to carry us away. It doesn't have to. Yeah. What should keep you strong to be able to overcome this kind of pressure to maintain ties with the leaders of the world such that you cease to guide them and they now guide and manipulate you? What do you need to be able to overcome and to lock such kinds of negative influence. What is it that you need as a pastor or a church leader? Okay, I can add on what a captain has said mm -hmm. from like three or four points. Mm -hmm. Point number one, let's take the example of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was choosing the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples first, mm -hmm. what did he do? He prayed for 12 hours. Which means, he, for each and every person, he dedicated one half prayer. Mm -hmm. But in spite of all that, 
you still had a Judas. Mm -hmm. You still have a Judas. Mm -hmm. Doubting Thomas mm -hmm. and any other, mm -hmm. yet Christ our Lord mm -hmm. prayed yes. for twelve good hours, mm -hmm. so it was there. Mm -hmm. Then again, uh, in the book of Second Timothy chapter three, mm -hmm. uh, Paul was sharing about uh, the signs of the end times. Yes, among them that men will be lovers of themselves, mm -hmm. prideful, mm -hmm. hateful, mm -hmm. boastful, lovers of money, mm -hmm. and all those. Mm -hmm. So on point two, we are also mm -hmm. seeing that. Uh, we are seeing the manifestations of the end times. Mm -hmm. It is here with us. Okay. And uh, even the, the, there's a time when the disciples asked Christ Jesus before he went to be crucified, before he went to the cross, mm -hmm. that well, how, what will we know the signs of the end? Well, how will we know? Yeah. They told them, mm -hmm. when you see these signs, nation fighting against nation, kingdom against kingdom, mm -hmm. the love of men will grow cold. Then you will know yes. that the end has come. Has come. Mm -hmm. So we also have the end of the times with us here. And again, there's a point that Paul expressed uh, in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 2, from verse 4, mm -hmm. that false brethren had infiltrated our camps to spy on the freedom that we have in Christ so that they may enslave us. Mm -hmm. So even among us, the brethren, they were not just, they were not worldly people. They were false brethren who had infiltrated. Yes. Right now in the Christian ranks, we mm -hmm. have got a lot of infiltration. Yes. And what we should realize is mm -hmm. that the arch enemy number one of the devil is the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. If there is anything that is being fought by all powers of darkness, is the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if men don't stand with the gospel, because one of the things that, uh, that uh, the, one of the repercussions of this infiltration mm -hmm. is uh, the preaching of false gospel. The devil has lowered the level of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now the blood of Christ has been taken as a common thing. So for us, we should go back to preach the original gospel. Yes. Because when we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, it cuts across all denominations. Mm -hmm. Because right now, the devil has also, also, also separated people with the doctrine of differences. Yes. This denomination has got their own doctrine. This one has got their own doctrine. Mm -hmm. But when we preach the message of the cross, it cuts across every other person. True. So I think for us, we should go back to the message of the cross mm -hmm. and also on prayer. Because that is, that is a good solution. I like the fact that Jesus prayed for 12 hours and still like, Judas emerged out of the same group that he had. Mm -hmm. And, and um, listening to, to Sylvester, I'm really impressed to hear the things that he has to say, especially on the fact that we need to go back to the original message of the cross other than uh, shouting about our denomination and the doctrines that we talk about, but rather just the message, the original message of Jesus Christ. Dr. Kennedy, I'm looking at the leadership of the church today and reflecting on the points that you have spoken here today also. And I'm wondering, as a chaplain, or having realized all these challenges with us today, what are you doing about them? Because it is one thing to just know this is what is going on mm -hmm. and just tear and say, let them do whatever. Mm -hmm. It is another thing to be the leader who makes a difference and mm -hmm. changes and brings change mm -hmm. so that you relocate the leadership of the church back to its original position mm -hmm. where the church cannot be had. Mm -hmm. And remember, we cannot hear the church if the church has no true substance. Mm -hmm. If the church has not gone back to the cross, we cannot listen. It is just, you know, the same people who compromise. So when you mention Bishop so-and-so, we are like, ah, this bishop who is allied to the what and the whoever in the government. So we somehow judge you and you don't want to listen from you because you don't have content and substance to guide and to govern us as those who follow the church. What are you doing as a leader in the leadership body? Uh, that is a good question. Um, straight away to the answer, we do uh, almost free seminars on church leadership and administration. Free? Yes, almost free. Mm -hmm. Maybe charge just a certificate of attendance. Mm -hmm. So we do seminars and uh, we call clergies, then we, we teach them. We mm -hmm. bring a uh, seasoned uh, ministers mm -hmm. and uh, different uh, teachers of the word. You know, everybody needs to go back and refresh. Yes. The Bible says, repent thereof, the time of refreshment may come from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We as a biblical institution, we do seminars, we do conferences, and we go back to teach um, leaders 
you know, about uh, biblical leadership and administration. The biblical leadership, not what some others have gathered from somewhere, mm -hmm. just taking it from the Bible and letting it be as it was mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, mm -hmm. other than trying to bring in some new theologies. Wow. Many people today, mm -hmm. I'm a doctor, I hold several documentation. Mm -hmm. he, I, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm a doctor of theology, uh -huh. I'm a doctor of divinity, mm -hmm. I hold my PhD in philosophy, mm -hmm. but you see that one, I, I have my my BA in business administration. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm pursuing diplomacy. Mm -hmm. But you see, all those titles, they would not add anything if they wouldn't transform a life. True. I agree. Uh, I agree. If it, they don't transform, lies. it's just nothing. Yes, it's just... Yes. We are actually out of time, unfortunately. I would like to hear more of that. <laughs> We're out of time, and I want to hear you say your parting shots and last words to our viewer today. I'm so uh, much excited to hear the many titles that you hold and the fact that you don't just hold them, but you actually reckon that if they do not transform a life, then it is nothing. Mm -hmm. Your last words, uh, Sylvester. My last words to the church leaders, mm -hmm. them that are called. Yes. You should embrace uh, what our Lord Jesus Christ had started. You no, know, the church started mm -hmm. the book of Acts chapter 2 mm -hmm. after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's when the book of Acts chapter 3 we saw the first miracle where a crippled person was made to walk through the name of Jesus. Okay. And see all the people congregated and say, by whose authority or power you do make this man walk. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said, it is the name of Jesus it is that made him walk. And Acts 4 12 says, There is no any other name given to us under heaven by which we can be saved except the name of Jesus. So we should go out there and preach this name because the, the apostles walked under the revelation of this name wow. because it's the author of salvation. So we should I go like the way you up, law uphold that name. Dr. Kennedy? Yes, I would say that uh, the greatness of a man or a woman. Mm -hmm determines the cause he or she lives for. And he or, he or she, their willingness to pay the price to achieve it from the biblical foundation. The willingness to pay the price. The willingness to pay the from price. A particular foundation. Yes. Not just their point of view. No. Okay. I Thank like that. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. You are men of God, and I it hope is. that you are able to influence this country in a positive, and not only that, but in a biblical way, the foundation that you are talking about. It is such a honor hosting us. We are humbled. Wow. Thank you. Thank you also, viewer, for watching this episode of the Christian and Church Leadership today. I have been with men of God and I hope you have been inspired listening to them. If you are a leader, please listen to this again and just find out, are you in the right place? Are you in the right ministry? You could also want to join them and you could call us for their contacts. Thank you so much. See you next time. I have been your host. Betia Kuku is my name. Well, this is your girl Clara, and we are here on GBS TV, and this is Art Club, which comes to you every Wednesday and Thursdays from 8:30 to 9 p.m. Yo, guys, you can never miss this. Oh my God. The youth.